subject because um, when we begin to learn about you know the, even the old testament and this new testament we will see and tonight you'll get this understanding of why he had to be sacrificed um, because that's what the bible says he was the last sacrifice for sin and so just remember that no more sacrifices for sin so it's important because we're going to learn about in the old testament how every every person who sinned no matter what he did had to take an animal or a bird or a, or the poo would have to take meal and things like that to be able to sacrifice to get their sins paid for just remember that so why did he die let's let's go for it we'll start with 1 corinthians 2 2 and this is paul talking to the corinthians for i determined not to know anything among you except jesus christ and him crucified so what on earth does that mean but well, it's quite simple really whatever anybody wanted to tell him about anything in this world what he's got to know all the time is that jesus christ came he was crucified so he and all the rest of us could be free from sin and be reconciled to god and to be born again that's the beauty and you know and, and we already know that we've got to be born again if we're not born again we're not saved and we'll never get from god what he wants for us no matter what what believers say to you and they say well i'm praying to god for this and that and, and i'm saying well you be very careful because if you've not received the spirit he's going to hear your prayer but how can he answer it because you're not with him and it tells us that the carnal man the ones that haven't got the spirit cannot understand spiritual things and you know and we have a young lady who received the spirit and since she's received the spirit she has been, been trying very hard to make notes and learn all those things which is amazing so that's what's happened to all of us every single one of us when we received the spirit have had a different experience of what this bible and who jesus is amen and it's so important that we have this because what's he saying this jesus christ doing what it is i've got to remember that all the time because if i don't remember that all i'm going to do is to just go wandering about not remembering that hold on a moment the only reason why i have this faith now and this and and, 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 and trying to follow jesus is because of him having this sacrifice and him crucified this is what paul the apostle stated because he knew the importance of the crucifixion and what it meant for everyone people need to know this the cross his death and of course that resurrection of him coming out of a grave and living again is at the heart of our christian faith no resurrection we're just a religion mm. just like all those others who who wish to wish to tell us that you know they're going to be reincarnated and i said dear me reincarnation how do you know what you're going to be when you come back you could be a flea i said well don't come in our house my wife will spray stuff on you and you'll die you know it's, it is so important you know when i said so re reincarnation i didn't fancy that i'm thinking if i didn't do very well i don't know when i'm going to come back well, you know and that, leave that to your own imagination of what you might come back if you're not a really good person but if you're a good person you still come back as a flea or an ant it's so it's important that we know these events happen so that we could have our sins taken away and start a new life with jesus christ why is this this sin part so important because sin produces results in our life it produces things in our life and these are going to be explained in the following following slides here is man's biggest problem and it's and it's all of our problem as well it's not just every you know it's the christians as well 
This is our biggest problem. Romans 3.23, for all have sinned. All. Even born again, spirit-filled Christians still sin. Right. Bit of, a, bit of a difference that we don't like it and, and that spirit tells us and we've got repentance and we know and, and some of us get really irritated with ourselves that we do it again and again and again. Well, I, I've, got a, I've got a plan for stopping that in here. We put a plan in to stop if we keep continuing the same sin. But all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. And you will find out, people say, well, I'm a good person. You know, and I know the scriptures, and I can't keep telling the people the scriptures when they say they're a good person. I know what the Bible says. There is no man that's good. No, not one, except God. Oh, yeah, but of course, I can't tell you that's when I'm witnessing to someone. <laughs> so I have to, you know, sneakily get round it. Well, you know, if you lied and all these things. And one of the things that we have to do for everyone, whether you're a sinner or a saint, examine yourself. That's important. And those that are around you, those that you know, just look at them. Have we never lied? Have we, have we never lied? Yeah, it's okay. I mean, we're the same as everyone. It's, it's no one ever lied here. No, you see, it's important. And if you say, yes, I know you're lying. Then, you know, so it's, it's, so it's, so it's pretty important that you don't. Has, have you never spoke profanity? Yeah, look at that. You know, I'm, I'm not knocking on this one. <laughs> Gritty teeth, you know. <laughs> yeah, well, it's so simple, isn't it? And have you never talked about anyone? Gossip, tale bearing, slating people. Yes, mmm. It's important. Um, and that, has anyone here never had a, one bad fall? Okay. Is that enough? And we haven't even talked about sin, have we? Do you know what I mean? Do, do, do you understand what, I'm, what, what I've said there? We haven't even talked about sin. We haven't even, even talked about what, you know, the murder, sexual immorality, you know, you know adultery and, and, and fornication and Lying and cheating and stealing and violence and oh, and it goes on and on and on. We haven't mentioned them. But here's, the, here's one of the worst sins. Unbelief. You know, when we, people say to me, like, you know, that I'm a really good person, you know, I know that God's going God's to gonna do that. God's going to, you know, take me to heaven. I said, well, I'm glad you know that and, you know, and, and that, that the Bible says, if you don't follow God, you won't go to heaven. You know, I said, and I, this, is, this is a question I always ask people when they, they think that. I say, isn't it amazing? Um, you know, the great, do you know what the great commandment is? The great commandment is to hear, O Israel. It comes back from the Shema in, 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 in Deuteronomy. Hear, O Israel. You know, our Lord is one Lord. And you shall love him with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. And, 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 and second is namely this, that you shall love thy neighbour as thyself. And that's, of course, so people who don't go to church, don't read the Bible, don't, don't do anything at all to follow God. And I say, well, you've broken the first commandment. You haven't got to do anything else. You broke, you broke the first commandment, you're in trouble. You've got to love him. Love him with all your heart, mind and soul and strength. But if you don't know him, how can you love him? So the relationship like with Jesus, is that's what we're doing. You know, we call it this truth revealed because we've got to we'll try and reveal the truth of God to whoever we're talking to. It's so important. So that's the problem. And this is what it does. The pollution of sin. Sin has polluted mankind right from Adam and Eve. Pollution. As soon as sin came, evil had its way. God had to kick them out of the out of the Garden of Eden, where everything was hunky dory, and that was it. And and then the devil has his way with men. Then 
And that's where it started. And as, and as we know today, you know there's more sin today than any other time in the, in the world. How could I say that? Simple. <laughs> okay, excuse me. <laughs> Small people. No wonder, no wonder the Lord turned around and said to us, like, you know, where sin abounds, the grace of God shall abound even more. No wonder he said, greater things than these you shall do. That's what Jesus did. You know, he said, greater things than these that you shall do. That's Jesus. Said, Why? Because there's a greater work to be done. It's, it's pretty simple. But listen to this. I love this. Mark 7, 20, 23. And he said, what comes out of a man? That defiles a man. For from within, out of the heart of men, proceed evil thoughts, adulteries, fornications, murders, thefts, covetousness, wickedness, deceit, lewdness, an evil eye. <laughs> Don't look at me like that. <laughs> Blasphemy, pride, foolishness, all these evil things come from within man and defile the man. Isn't that amazing? Not what we eat, it's what comes out of us. And so you can see why, you know, the, the lust of the eye, the lust of the flesh, the pride of life, look at me, the boasting and all the other things, the things that we say when we get angry and all those other things. You can see that's in it. But the Bible turns around and they say, out of the abundance of your heart, your mouth shall speak. And I've always said to people, just talk to people. You'll see whether they're Christian or not. Because something will come out of their mouth and you'll go, my, call themselves a Christian and they say things like that. I know we don't say it, but it's in our heads. Amen. And it's important that we know that. So, you know, we as Christians, and when we talk and when we look, you know, the Bible tells us to examine ourselves. So it's really important when we're looking at this, this sin, because this is why, this is why Jesus had to die, because of this of all these things that are happening and how man destroys man with all this you know it breaks up marriages it, it destroys individuals it's everything about this you know it creates havoc in 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 our world power of sin yeah sin has power you know, if you think where sin came from, you know, from the beginning, it was from the devil who persuaded Adam and Eve to do some, the only one thing that God told them not what to do. So we know where this sin comes from. We don't have to be really super spiritual. And the power of sin is this. Jesus answered them and said, most assuredly, when he says assuredly, it's, it's, going, it's one of these ones that you don't listen. I say to you, whoever commits sin, is a slave of sin. Slave, so what, what, what does a slave have? He has a, a, who said that? Thank you, David. He has a master. So if sin is not of God and is a slave of sin, who is our, who, who is our master when we're sinning? Isn't it? Up, it's, I know it's not nice. I know, I know we do. I know, I know we do. I know we don't like to think about it, you know, because, but this is the Bible. This is, this is what, this is what has got me saved. This has changed my whole life, you know, to try to be a good person, to try the things of God, to see that they work. To make sure our, our, our home is a happy home and my family is a happy family following God and, and having church and going out and, and speaking to people. It's so important that we know these spiritual things. Whoever commits sin is a slave of sin. You are a slave. Of, you can call it whatever you like. Is a slave of the wicked one, of the devil, of Satan, of Lucifer, the Azelbub, you can use any name you like. 
but that's who we're a slave of. <clears throat> so what's the penalty? The penalty for sin? Because every, everything we say and do in this life has consequences. No matter what you want to do, and no matter how you want to justify anything you say and do, they all have consequences. And so whatever we do, somewhere we're going to receive the consequence. And the, and the scripture is, is, is incredibly clear again. It says, whatever, whatever you sow, you shall reap. And that's so important, isn't it? Whatever we sow, we shall reap. So you sow hatred, you reap hatred. You show, you, 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 you whatever it is, you, 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 you sow um, deceit, you'll reap it. And so no wonder God is, is trying to teach us, like, you know, <laughs> don't sin. <laughs> Why do it? What, what good does it do you? To do wrong. Can you see that? It's so important. But the wages of sin, so here's your payment, is death. Don't worry, you're not gonna die tonight if you sin, all right? So just 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 you know. But the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. This death is not a flesh death. It's not going to a grave. This death is a spiritual death. And we know this because Adam and Eve were separated from God right from the beginning. And that's the death. The worst thing we can, we can do in our life is never find who God is. A separation from God. You know, and, and I know... It, for myself, the times that I've had my, my wilderness times and, you know, I've been struggling and everything like that. To be separated from God, for me, is, is, you know, is awful. And, you know, and I used to pray some, some, some my wife used to think, very strange prayers. You know, whatever you, whatever you do, Lord, I said, you can take the house away. You can take my car and my business and all the money away. You can take it all. But do not take your spirit away from me, Lord. In my life, we've got. <laughs> you know, but it, but it's okay. I knew what I, I knew what I was praying because I understood I can't walk away from this. A walk away will just go straight back into our old life, and you know, and, and that's not that's not good. Some of us, it's worse than others. But don't forget, whatever we've done, we always feel we always felt that guilt. And that shame of the wrong things that we've done. And that's what he wants to release his probe. So we don't want to be separated. But don't forget, every single person is born into sin. They're born into sin. They, didn't, they were not born a born-again Christian. They were born in the flesh. And they were born into sin. And it's only when those children grow up and begin to learn about God, about the Bible, and what they've got to do, that they can break, break that 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 sin that's inside us. Because don't forget, people say to me, "Mark, you mean children? You know, of, of the devil? No, you can't say they're of the devil. It's just that they were born into sin. Until they grow and understand and can see and understand, God has not a problem with them. But you know, it's quite simple to see. Every everyone's had children. Children, 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 yeah. And their children are growing up, you know, and, and they, 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 they can't speak and they're playing with other little tiny babies and that. And somebody takes their toy off them and your child goes, boff, you know, or, you know, or pushes them over, you know, or screams at them or has a mad fit, you know. And, and, I, and I look at it and I'm going, well, who's taught them that? So it is inside us. And as we grow old, we know it's inside us. And so it's so important we understand this. So that's why the penalty for sin is, is death, a separation from God. And also, you know, you can see that separation from God by the way people are. You know, when you just listen to what they say, how they react to things. 
you know, and, and the people say, oh, I've told God to tell them about God and they've gone berserk. I said, that's great. And they go, no, it's not right. I said, it is. It's actually showing you what spirit it is. You actually can see somebody doesn't want to know. And if Christians don't want to know about the Bible, be careful. Be careful. It's so important that we follow the word of God and we understand what God is trying to teach us. Separation. And here it is. This is, goes right back into the Old Testament, Isaiah 59.2. But your iniquities, iniquities is the posh word for sin, but your sin has separated you from your God. And your sins have hidden his face from you so that he will not fear. That again is quite, quite difficult, isn't it? You think, oh, well, I'm a nice person. I pray to, I'm praying to God. You know, you didn't sin. How can he hear? Well, of course he can hear. You say, yeah, but the Lord said he cannot dwell where sin is. No wonder we are blessed to be able to repent daily, be able to ask God to forgive us daily, and so we can he can at least hear our prayers. Here's the solution. So this is it. This is why Jesus came. 1 Peter 2.24 Who himself bore our sin in his own body on the tree that we, having died to sins, might live for righteousness by whose stripes we were healed. That's what he came for. One of the reasons why Jesus came was to be this last sacrifice for sin. God had this plan before everything happened that as he, he, he chose the people for himself and they, and you know, he knew they'd be in and out and some would, a remnant would stay with him, but they'd keep going and he'd, and he'd send judges and, and prophets to, to tell the Jews to come back, to come back, you know, and they would, some kings would come back. When they got kings, some would come back. But, but there was only kings in Judah, wasn't it, Linda? That, that were good ones. All the other ones in the, in, 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 um, the northern kingdom, not one of them ever turned to God. So there's man in, in his, what he wants, he's trying to get what he wants, so those kings are trying to get what they want and not what God wants. And yet, and yet when they obeyed God, God blessed them. You know, so it's quite a fascinating story. And so this, that, and every time, as I said, every time the people sinned, <laughs> they had to take a sacrifice to the temple. So isn't it fascinating? I, I, I love this. This is my, my imagination now. Linda, Linda's factual one is that, dear me, Mark, look at all these animals that were slaughtered. He said it must have been flowing with blood. There must have been a river from blood coming from the temple. He said there's that much. But for me, I felt I thought a bit carnally that you'd have a queue. You'd have a queue outside the temple because, you know, hundreds of thousands of Jews and, uh, you know, and a few sin. And, you know, and then you've got one with a little pigeon, you know, a turtle dove. And then you've got somebody with a herd of cattle. Who's done the worst sin? You know, and all them, and this is me, this is, I'm going, and yet all the people are watching and going, hey, 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 Kev, 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 look at Andrew over there with a the, the herd of cattle, you know, and I, I, I knew she wasn't right, you know, you know, so it's really important that, you know, that it's, it's, you can laugh, it's only your mom, it's a, it's, it's, so it's really important that we know that God had this plan in sending Jesus Christ to reconcile the world to God. 
and he gave him everything. He even, he even tells us in, 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 in Matthew 28, 18, yes, 17, 28, 17, he even said, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. That's what Jesus said. Then we know who he is. So he could do all these things because the, the fullness of God dwelt in Jesus bodily. But God sent him his only begotten son. And his only, be why he called him his only begotten son, it was the only one born of the spirit. All the rest of us were born from mum and dad in the flesh so it really is important and he sent him that only one that he made so special and he sent him to die as the last sacrifice to pay the penalty for your sin i make this i make this really really personal if no one else sinned in the world except for you he still would have died just for you isn't that incredible i really do find that really important because we tend we tend to go you come to save the world no trying to save you isn't that wonderful wonderful you save, save you bring hallelujah I knew Val. Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> Missed one out. I'm sorry I missed somebody out there. <laughs> okay. Important. This is really important because this is God's plan. You know. We people question everything in the Bible, you know. Why did he do that? Why didn't he have another thing? Because that's what he planned. You know, you know, and, and I said, I'm sorry, I wasn't there at the beginning giving God my wisdom to tell him what to do <laughs> that was my wife if you heard that <laughs> you know and, and it's amazing because you know the one thing I, 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 i've known is that the more i get to know god and the word the more i can see how incredible this plan was how beautiful how incredible it should give every single living creature upon this earth a chance to know who he is, to join him here upon this earth, in the spirit, to follow and learn of him so they can have eternal life. But beside that, but also to be blessed upon this earth. It's, it's just wonderful. Okay. And this is the human race. Isaiah 53, 6. All we like sheep have gone astray we have turned every one to his own way and the lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all and that's us in this world we without god we try to find our own way every single one of us you know whatever wherever we are wherever we live and whatever circumstance you know uh, we, we, we then have to try and find a way in life, um, you know, to be successful or not successful, to be educated or not educated, whatever it may be, um, you know, and, it, and, it, and, and for me, it, it's so important because we in this Western world have some amazing, amazing opportunities for everyone to learn, to be able to do things, and yet you go, um, you know, into some of the third what, what we call third world countries I'm, I'm, I'm thinking sometimes we're going back to third world uh, but that's only me you can disregard that um and, but you could you, they haven't got the opportunity they haven't got the education they, they haven't got the opportunity that we have and uh, it was so important when you see people scraping a living and i don't mean scraping a living like we do in this country uh, but scraping a living to feed themselves and their family, trying to make a, a home out of 
tarmac and tin and stuff we know in, in Africa as well it's just exactly the same Mexico Brazil there's still areas just like this and you know and when people look at America you know and, and they call themselves a the land of milk and honey you know and the land of opportunity but you know I will just give you one testimony and you know, we went to Hollywood we went to Hollywood you know and we walked on the on the on the pavement you know the walkway of stars and, and it, it was wrong I knew it was wrong in that walkway of stars I wasn't on it um, you know so it's you say it felt I just knew it was wrong but it's there and the glitz is there wasn't it everywhere was the glitz and you know fancy cars and you know posers coming down the road like you know um, and, 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 and and then Frank, the, the pastor who we were with, he said, okay, that's what this is. Look at it. Look at the richness everywhere. Right. We drove two blocks, two blocks away, and there was cardboard city. Cardboard city with hundreds of people living on the street in cardboard boxes. And he went, this is reality. So even with the richness, we don't share it. Incredible, incredible. And so you know that's that's what it's like. Um, you know, and I, I tell this tale the first time I ever went to India in '99, and I stopped in a in a in a village um, for a month. Uh, my my younger brother stayed with me for two weeks, but I stopped for a whole month. And you know the place was awful. You know we lived. You know, even in a really poor village, they have to put barbed wire um, all around the walls, and the walls are, you know, you have to you can run and try to get over them, even in the high and steel gates and stuff like this. And they don't have wooden wardrobes in their houses; they've got metal ones, and they're bolted to the they're bolted to the wall, and then they have to put big locks on them. And these are the poor people. And the sewage was going down the street. And I followed the sewage down to, to you know, to where it, where it was going, and it was a like a like a, a pond of sewage at the end of the thing. And as I walked towards the pond, what happened? A cloud come off the pond, mosquitoes and flies and everything else. And I just went, oh my god, what is this? What is this? And so that kind of thing, um, you know, it was awful. And you know, every, in every household in that village. There was a really poorly sick child. It was just look, <laughs> I can't tell you what was happening in my head um, when I when I was there. But it was amazing. But the way this country has this incredible opportunity. But everywhere it's the same. Everywhere it's the same. Everyone is trying to make their own way. And don't want to listen to that. Jesus Christ. So it's so important and while people are like that they just think we're okay you know, they never they really don't think about are we living badly or in a wrong way and uh, we just justify how we live the means is to the end and that's what we do and that's what everyone does um, and especially if anyone like me goes and questions them of why they're living like that they'll justify exactly why they think and live and speak the way they do. Isn't that right, Mr. Perry? Anyway, okay. Praise the Lord. It's so important we remember this because I was just the same. And so, you know, I, 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 we never, we never, we never really, we never, when we got married, we never went to church or anything. My wife and I never went to church or anything like that. Um, and so, so I do understand that we're just working and thinking this is life. And just trying to make things work and, and, and whatever and whatever it is so we we had um we have gone astray because no one had spoke to us um, and the first person that spoke to me was 37 and it was a, it was a child evangelist and, um, and he is the first one and he actually took me to a church of england church um, but he said, I won't take you to the daytime service, Mark. I'll take you to the nighttime. You'll find that really incredible. And I was going, well, why is, why, why, what's the difference? He said, you, you, well, well, it's very different at the nighttime. There's different people coming. I want you to come and listen to this man. And I did. 
<laughs> and I remember being there, you know, and, and I hadn't been to church, you know, funerals and things like that, weddings. And I'm sitting next to this chap, and this chap's preaching away. And I actually felt, and I, I, I understand when people say, I thought Colin has told him all about my life. <laughs> and I remember sitting there going, you know, really uncomfortable. And I was just like moving around. And Colin told me, you know, years later, didn't he? He said, I thought he, I thought he was going to get up and go. He said, I thought, oh, no. You know, because I knew a bit about you, Mark. And I'm thinking, oh, no. <laughs> you know, Mark's feeling very uncomfortable. But I was the first one up to the altar. I mean, I've never been to an altar call. I've never seen anything like it in my life. He said, if anybody would like to know, is he come to the front we'll pray for it. I said, well, I better go, better go and get prayed for because I don't feel very good now. <laughs> and I remember going up to the front, you know, and having all these prayers. And, you know, Colin was, uh, Colin was delighted. But I didn't become a Christian. Why? Because the head, head moved in, started to try to justify my life and everything else. And, um, and it was 10 years, 10 years after that. And it, no, two years after that. I remember. Two years when I got saved, that was right. Two years after that, and that I got saved. So even then, although I was affected, oh no, was, you prayed for 10 years. Linda prayed for me for 10 years when she, when she started going to church. Um, she started to pray for me because that's what the, the vicar said, you must pray for your husband. Um, she did 10 years, it took me and so. Don't give up, everybody. Don't give up on anyone. Don't give up on anyone. <laughs> I might come on. I might come on to Zoom on Wednesday. <laughs> Kevin's doing. Kevin's doing. I might come on to Zoom on Wednesday. Kevin. Yeah, I'm sure I'll be able to add to your add to your repertoire of jokes. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. God bless Kevin, Father, and forgive him. Hallelujah. Nice chap as he may be. Hallelujah. But the result of what Jesus does is, is just absolutely um, tremendous. It, it, it really is. And it, it, the result is that he wants to cleanse us. He wants us to get rid of all these things, our past, our sins, the way we speak, the way we think. He wants to, he wants to teach us, he wants to love us, and he wants to be kind and generous to us. And he wants to give us faith, and he wants to give us hope for the future, he wants to give us understanding, he wants to give us knowledge, and he wants us to he wants us to have uh, you know, uh, joy and peace and you know and live right in this life so he can pour out his blessings. And I say to him, who wouldn't want that? You know, who wouldn't want to be happier? Who wouldn't want to have joy in their house instead of friction? Who wouldn't? But it means that we have to work with God and together to get all what God wants for us. Romans, Romans 3.25. God presented Christ as a sacrifice of atonement. And, you know, one of the old preachers uses atonement, and he, goes, and he says, at one with God. That's what he wants. He, 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 we were meant to be at one with God. And so it's important because he wanted us to get rid of our sins, but not for us to make any sacrifices. Jesus Christ came to make that sacrifice so no one would ever have to do all these blood sacrifices again once and for all. And that's the plan of God. And through the shedding of his blood, to be received by faith, the shedding of the blood, you see, right from the beginning, God covered sin with the shedding of blood. Adam and Eve, when they sinned, the one reason that God, God knew it, well, he knew it anyhow, but they were naked. So they, you know, they were naked in the garden and it meant nothing to them. Because they had no sin. Uh, but when they sinned, they went and hid behind the tree. You know, I mean, I, I love it. It was my first ever sermon when I, on the, on the day that I was born again, um, and I, I, the day I was born again was on a, on a Monday. I received the, I, I got baptized on the Thursday, and the pastor of that church in America said, said to me, You're preaching Sunday? 
brand new Christian. You see, you're preaching on it. What's this mean? You know, what I'm preaching. Um, and, and so I didn't ask him anything. He said, just go and pray and, and ask God to give you some words to do. So I actually give uh, a bit of a testimony. But what I did, what I, my, my, my sermon was, are you hiding from Christ? And of course, I realized that when I seen that God knows everything coming up, you know, then I said, like, follow me. God is everywhere and he knows everything. That's stupid. You know, I'm going to tree. You know, and that's what I thought. I didn't say that to them. That was just my mind. You know, I said, that's, that's amazing, God, you know. So he knew. And what he did, so to, to, to cover their shame, to cover their embarrassment of being naked. And, and so they knew that that was wrong now. Whereas with God, everything goes. It doesn't really matter. So he, he slaughtered animals and covered them with the skin so he had to kill them to do it right from the beginning blood sacrifice had to be there to cover the sins of man so that happened with animals all the way through them but to us through the shedding of his blood to receive by faith so we've got to believe that this is what they did in the old testament did that's what god did from the very beginning but he's going to shed his blood so we don't have to pay for our sins okay important but we've got to believe and this is why we teach faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of god so if we don't get the word out how are all these people who don't know ever going to have any faith just doesn't pop into you and as and and, 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 and and all of us will know yes we might believe but we can believe wrongly we can just say i believe and just well i believe so that's it well no it's not like that so it's got to be received by faith so that's why jesus christ when he come and, he, and when he left his, his commission with the people he said go go and tell everyone then he said and when you've told them what well, teach them and make disciples of them don't let them become disciples make them because don't forget jesus made his disciples three and a half years of training hmm. hallelujah he did this to demonstrate his righteousness to de demonstrate what is right with god it's as simple as that because in his forbearance, I love this. He forbears us. You know, we I'll, I'll, I'll put it in very plain English. He puts up with us. So I love that one because you know, you know why I love it so much? Because I've got to put up with you. And what's even better, you I've got to, okay, David, wait for the punchline. You know, I, you, 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 you don't need to come in with your own punchline. I'm going to do it myself. Hallelujah. I'm going to humble myself, and you have to put up with me. Is that great for you? You've got to put up with me. You know, I've got to put up with you as well. You know, so we've got to do a good deal here. You know, let's be good to each other. Yeah, good lad. He actually put his thumb up. Well done. It's important because in his forbearance he had left the sins committed beforehand unpunished. We have never really been punished for our sins. Yeah, we're separated from God, but Ted has sent a uh, Ted has sent a, a, a did you, oh you're not on our WhatsApp. Do you want to go on our WhatsApp as well? Church WhatsApp. Okay, because you'll see some of these things. So Ted's put on his WhatsApp, he's, he's put, you know, as Mark was saying, like, you know, if we, most of us, if we were in the Old Testament, none of us would be alive today. We'd have all been stoned to death. You know, he said, so this, this is what this is about. He'd left the sins committed his hand unpunished. That's amazing, isn't it? And they did it to demonstrate his righteousness at his present form. I think that's beautiful. Isn't it? He said, That's it. This is what I've come for. I don't care what you've done. 
I don't care where you've been. I don't care all about that past. And you know, I've, I've, I've left you, your sins committed because I'm trying to demonstrate now. Now you find this Jesus Christ and now you find the truth that, that you know that he's come to, 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 to make sure you can be free of all of it. This present time. So as to be just and the one who justifies those who have faith in Jesus. God is just. He does the right things all the time. And, 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 and don't forget, and because he's just, the one who believes in Jesus, he will be just to them. He'll make us as if we've just had not sinned. Isn't that beautiful? He wants to take it away. And so he wants to cleanse us of all the rubbish. That's a nice posh word. Rubbish that we've got ourselves into. And to cleanse us so we can start again. And that is, is beautiful. We started off at the beginning with Jesus said, you know, that, you know, that he is the light. He's the light of the world. But because he went back to heaven, he left the light with. Isn't that amazing? That's why he says, well, you know, that, that, that we, we're the light of the world. You know, you don't hide your light. You don't put it under, a, you know, you, you don't you, you don't get electricity, and, 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 you know, and, 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 and all these fancy shades and everything and then go and hide it in the bushes. And then cover it over with the blankets. You put it in the top of the room so everyone can see the light. You know, we know that, you know, the, and the, the scripture is that you don't get a light put it in a, you know, and, and put it under a bushel. You stick it on top of the hill so everyone can see the light. That's us. So when we become Christians, we've got, people have got to see this light in us. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. Isn't that beautiful? You know, it, it's so important, you know, this, it, it, it's this fellowship, you know, that we, we have with, 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 with Christ now living in us. And the fellowship with one another that allows us to grow in Christ. When we separate ourselves from the church, when we separate ourselves from Christians, we do begin to go backwards. All of us. It's amazing. It is amazing. Important. But don't worry, because we're going to walk in the light. Because we know he's the light and we can, we can have this light. And we will have fellowship with each other. And, it, and that blood will cleanse us from all sin. And our daily repentance, doesn't matter, make mistakes and everything else, repent and God forgives and we start a new day. That's, I love it. New mercies every morning. So, look at the results. Though. Freedom and liberty. They're both the same, really. I don't know why I put both of them up there. Freedom and liberty. You know, that, that freedom to be who, who God wants us to, the freedom to be able to talk about Jesus, to be able to be able to come to church and worship with, with freedom. You know, the, the, the Bible says I've got to love him with all I've got, and I have to give him with, 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 whatever I've got. And so, you know, so it's it's not only my voice, you know, and, and, and it's my body, it's my actions, it's everything, you know, and it's freedom. And, it, and the freedom we get is that, you know, that there's no more power and penalty of sin that controls us. It's so important, that freedom, you know, and, and, and please don't punish yourselves when you make a mistake. Everyone makes a mistake. I had a conversation with a lady today, and I said, will you stop? I said, none of us who are perfect. He said, I have doubt. I said, I get disappointed. I don't get my prayers answered. So why, why do you get upset about yours not doing? And, you know, I'll get upset about mine. I said, but what I've got to do is to have the faith to believe 
is going to see me through no matter what I'm going through. When I turn to him, he turns to me. And that's beautiful as well. Just trying to tell us, you know, no, we're not perfect. And we are going to make these mistakes. But go back to him. He'll take you back in. And we'll learn. Now, I have to try and tell people there's no, there's, <laughs> there's no failure in the gospel. Wherever we fail, it, we just take it back to God, asking to forgive him. And he just picks us back up, pushes us off, back on the path. You're going to learn from this. Okay. Being, Romans 3.24, being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. Don't worry about the words. I'm going to explain them. Look. Justified. You know, that, that justification, the, you know, the, the, greatest, the greatest preacher on justification was John Wesley. Not, not Paul, I know in the scripture, but the greatest preacher that we've got was John Wesley. He used to tell us that, you know, stop. You know, it's so important that we know that when we turn to God and follow what he is, we, he justifies us. What does it mean? Justification, the establishment of a person as just, as right with God. That's what it means. As just by acquittal from guilt. You go to a, you go to court and you've done something wrong and they make you guilty. They don't acquit you. They punish you. But here, when you've done wrong, as long as we believe and we go and when we and when we repent and follow what Jesus does, he says, I'm gonna, I am going to acquit you. From all what you've done wrong. Isn't that amazing? The act of pronouncing righteous. He says, it's not our righteousness. It's not how good we are. It's the goodness that he will give us. And he'll, he'll always be with you and show you the way. No matter where we go, he'll be with us. If we have the faith to believe and the faith to follow and the faith to obey what he tells us to do, he will always acquit us from guilt and make us just as if we haven't sinned. Beautiful. Redemption. Anybody bought, anybody have, not, not anybody get, get all these vouchers off of, you know, buy one, get one free and all the rest of it and get 10% off, go to the, and you can take all these um, little, little, what do they call them? Coupons. Take all these coupons everywhere. Well, that's what this is. This is this this is this redemption. It's paying for something. And this redemption, all it means, look, is to release by paying a ransom price to redeem. So we get these coupons, we redeem them, don't we? So we pay, put that in, and it pays for you know a discount of the of the goods. Oh, God pays for everything. Pays for our sin. It pays. You don't have to go and buy a cow to 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 get your sin covered. You get redeemed. It denotes to buy out, especially purchasing a slave with a view to his freedom. Isn't that amazing? So he paid the price with his life for our sin. So he purchased through his death our freedom. Isn't that amazing? Isn't that amazing? Purchased our price for our sin by his death. It's incredible. So, you know, I always, when I used to say, it's like, it's like, it's like you get paid for my I said, I get paid. No, Mark, no. Jesus, Jesus paid it for you. You don't get paid. Your payment is being released from sin. Free. So we were slave of sin. He, he dies on the cross to redeem us, to pay the price for our sin, and that's why we get redemption. And that's what that freedom is all about. That is in Christ Jesus. If we would not have died, we would have not have been redeemed. Amen. And of course, I've heard this many times tonight, the Old Testament way of payment of sinning uh, was by the blood of bulls, goats, and turtle doves, and all the rest of it. But it is not possible. 
that the blood of bulls and goats could take away sin. In the Old Testament, their sins were never taken away. They were just paid for. That's what it was. Fascinating, isn't it? They were just paid for with, their, with, with what they'd done, with, you know, with, with what, what animal, whatever else they were just paid for. And in each year, the high priest used to have to go into an inner, inner temple to sit there with, with the presence of God. It's the only time. And then he had to make sacrifices for the whole of Israel to pay for the whole of Israel's sin. It was never taken away. And that is one of the most incredible things about our Jesus Christ. Not only did he pay for our sin, he took them away. Isn't that incredible? On that cross, he took every sin of the world. Every disease and everything else all went upon him. And when that sin came, Jesus was on that cross and he cried out, My God, my God, why have that forsaken me? Isn't that incredible? Because God couldn't stay with him then. The Spirit of God left him. Because, because he tells us God cannot dwell where there's sin is. For the first time, the Spirit left. He was a man in his flesh. No wonder he died. Some say he died of a broken heart. I don't know. But can you imagine having all that evil put inside you all at once? Mm. So he had to die to shed the blood for all of our sins. And here we go. Freedom. He said, I'm going to make you free. I'm going to make you free from this, 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 this evil one or the evil ones or the demons. You know, let's, let's put it in perspective. It's, it's not just an evil out there. It's an evil in here. Inside us. That's where it is. He wants to make you free. And therefore, if the sun makes you free, you shall be free indeed. We don't need to take the sins back. We don't need to go back and keep remembering how bad we were. We don't need to keep going back and pulling the stuff up that makes us feel angry. We don't need to go back and, and punish somebody else with their sins, reminding them of what they did. No, he wants us to be free. Free to be children of God that he wants us to be. Do you know God's got a plan for you? He's got a plan for you. Every single one. No matter who you are, what you are, where you come from. That is just incredible. But what we've got to do is to get in his plan, not our plan. So we've got to get in to his kingdom to be able to find what the plan is. And then when we're in, he'll show us the way. People say, well, does God just tell you, Mark? I said, no. He said, why? Well, I said, you know, the, the, the journeys I've been on, you know, the, the, you know the, the, nothing's ever happened simply. He didn't send me a text, you know, telling me, you know, he, didn't, he definitely didn't go on Zoom, I uh, promise you. Um, I don't think he'd be able to do it either. It's, uh, you know, so so it's really important, you know. But I always remember on my my first missions trip, I kept getting these letters off the bishop saying, um, uh, "You haven't answered about coming on the missions trip," and, and, I, and I kept replying, "Well, I have. I'm not going." He said, "But you've got to go." And I'm going, "What's wrong with the bishop? What's wrong with his bishop? Um, anyway, he came to our house." Um, and that was nobody knew. He said, "No, no, it doesn't go to it doesn't go to people's houses. That's not his. That's not his thing. He goes to the churches and sees everyone. And, um, and he came to our house with his wife. And he came and um, they, they said that we had a nice piano there. And, and uh, he said, who plays the piano? And uh, I said, Linda and the children. And, uh, and, and, oh, and they said, do you play a musical instrument? And I said, yes. And I said, 
Julius, yeah, I played the trumpet. And his wife said, his wife, this is the bishop's wife. She said, get lost. I don't believe you. And I went, right, I'll fetch it. And I remember I went running up the stairs and I've got my trumpet and I come down and I was learning to play Amazing Grace. <laughs> yep, ready? And I went and I went, oh, and they all started laughing. <laughs> and I, I, and I, I struck, what are you laughing at? Anyway, they carried on laughing. Anyway, and I was blowing. And as I went to blow, they started laughing again. Have you ever tried to play a trumpet and laugh? <laughs> Guess what came out? <laughs> and that was it. The whole house was in hysterics. So to this day, she never believed I could play the trumpet. Hallelujah. But he got on the piano. He got on the piano and he started singing songs. You know, yeah, some, some, but also some fiddly songs. We had a great night. And he said, right, we're going to get back to the hotel. He said, could you take me back now, Mark? I said, yeah. And as I was going back to the hotel, he said, you know why I'm here, don't you? I said, no, I'm not. It's the missions trip. I said, well, I said, I'm not going. I said, well, I told you. God is telling me that you've got to go. You will go. <laughs> I don't know what, he hasn't told me. And that's what I said to him, because that's all the way I was, Lord. Only a young person. And that's my excuse. And so, so he, he, so he said, right. So, told me, and I went. Got to at the hotel. You know, God bless you. Yeah, thanks for the wonderful evening. I knew it. Don't, don't forget. And I came home and I told my wife. I said, oh, I'm going to go and finish. Oh, I don't know. Anyway, we went to bed and an army can sleep. Kept waking up. So, oh, come on, then let's pray. We pray. You know, drop back after sleep. Woke up again. And he went on for what? Two or three hours, and uh, put the lights on. Okay, and my wife said, "This is this Malaysia thing, Mark. You got to, you got to, you, you know, do what you normally do practically." He said, "Make a list. Make a list." He said, "Four against. Right, okay then, four. Oh, and even Linda was giving me the four, not what four, but she was giving, she was giving, she was giving me the fours, and the list was going on the fours. She said, right, what you got against?" I haven't got the time. You man, you can please yourself. You're the boss. <laughs> <laughs> so we couldn't really find any things against not going. And Linda was, oh, oh I'm also you'd be really excited, Ma. And you'll be and you'll, you'll be able to go and see lots of you've never been to, you know, these and she, Linda was, you know, so the list was like this. Um, and I went, and she said, just go, Ma. Okay, I'll, I'll turn him in the morning. That will go. And we went to sleep with him. Pine woke up as though we'd been asleep all night. It was amazing. Goes to pick him back up. And I said, Bishop, Bishop, I've got some good news for you. He said, Oh, yes. And I knew it was mocking. You no, know, it wasn't mocking. Oh, yes. He said, I'm going. He goes, I told you you would. <laughs> you know? So we went. But not my plan. That's the point. Not my plan, not my thoughts. God didn't give me this great, you know, you're going to go here. But I went and we had the most incredible time um, on my first missions trip and, and, and as a young Christian as well. And what did we do? We did crazy things, but it was incredible. And I can give you loads of testimonies from that first trip, but I must finish. Hallelujah. Important that we work with God in God's plan. If we work with him, will come out. It will, but we've got to carry on. Perseverance, endurance, discipline. Man's hateful adjectives. Hallelujah. Yes, I know. I know. I, I, the reason why I know, because I didn't like them either. It's so, so important. So this is what he came. This is really what he died for, all the sins and everything else, and leaving his spirit with us and all that are beautiful. But God wanted him to restore man to his rightful place in knowing God. 2 Corinthians 5.19 That is, that 
God was in Christ, reconciling the world to himself, not imputing their trespasses, not blaming, not, not punishing them for their trespasses, and has committed to us the word of reconciliation being joined back with God. That's why he had to die. All these things God had a plan right from the beginning. And Jesus was there from the beginning as part of his plan. He created him as a man so he could dwell in him. The survival also says no man will see God. So he had to cloak himself in flesh. When he was gone, he was in Christ. He was trying to get his message out the world and get back to him and start a new life. And the life will give you hope and love and kindness and generosity and self control and knowledge and understanding and wisdom and also the promises of God to bless us. If we follow. Amen. Amen. Any questions? Please. Oh, that's Ben. Right. I was going to say, Kelly, stop it. It's a... Okay, okay. Please get lots of questions for this. Please, I want lots of questions. And because, because you've got to ask Kevin. <laughs> and he says, no, I'm not laughing now. <laughs> How do I come in? Children are the of light, whatever they 